My name is Jason Blue. I'm a singer, songwriter, record producer, entrepreneur, you know, an all round awesome guy, you know. And um, I am buzzing with Simple TV. Jason Blue. You say you don't need a man in your life. Get the money, you know, need the love. Love, love, love. Every day you the hustle alone. alone, alone, alone. Mm -hmm. Music started from home, basically, because uh, my dad was a musician. Um, he plays the, uh, the classic grand piano, and uh, I grew up in a house full of choristers. So basically, I was the only one who never made it to the choir, but you know. That's the story from another day. So yeah, story, story, um, music started from home for me. I've always had good music around. I've always had, um, you know, classic music like Sonny Ade, like Ebenezer Obi, like Fela Kuti, you know, all of these Nigerian classics. I grew up around all of that. Around, in the 90s, I listened to a lot of Fuji music. And um, I kind of, while growing up, I transitioned to hip hop music. I started up as, as a rapper. Can you just imagine that? So. Well, it's been music, music, music for me because I just love music and I live music, basically, and I make a living off of music. My first year in university, I was in a hostel, right? And <clears throat> I wrote a rap song, and a friend of mine was saying, you wrote this rap song, there's no hook. No, like, okay, write a hook for this song. I said, okay, so I wrote a hook. And I was singing this hook. This guy was walking back into the room. He was like, dude, you are better off as a singer. You know, your appearance, your whatever. So up to that point, I never really paid attention to my vocal abilities. But you know, from then on, it's just been like, I could, you know, I love I loved rap music. I, I rap a lot, but I could really, really identify more with singing, with R&B, with soulful music, you know, with harmonies, with, you know, expressions and stuff. So just kind of took off from there. And actually, I never really made a rap record, except maybe when I had rap verses in R&B songs. Oh, well, there's a wide range of um, musicians because a lot of musicians did different things for me. Because as far as singing goes, as far as vocals and, you know, I studied the music of guys that are really vocally, um, vocally able. Like, there's New Edition, there is, there is, um, there is Boys to Men, there is Silk. You know, that's for the group. There's Rough Ends, and when it comes to the solo acts, basically, no, for me, you know, there is Osha, there is, there is Tank, there is Gino Wine, there is Joe. You know, a lot of these guys, they did it for me vocally. But when it comes to uh, putting music together now as a producer, as um, you know, as a producer, you know, we talk about the underdogs, we talk about Timberland in Nigeria, we talk about Kobam Sasuko. And um, when it comes to all around putting music together now, the people that inspired me, you know, the discography of Michael Jackson is just, like, it's just amazing. The way this guy puts music together is just crazy. And oddly enough, Kendrick Lamar. You know, when I listen to Kendrick's music, you know, it's not like, this guy is not doing music. This, like, this guy is like putting movies together and all that. He's putting a concept in a concept. And it doesn't really feel like rap music. You feel like you're just listening to, you know, to an experience. So I learned from all of that. And that's how I put music together. You know, I go all the way. I don't, I don't put a limit to the music. Anything can inspire music. So I just go for the inspiration. And yeah, Microphone. Uh -huh. I more music on my head. for me is just, it's just another whole new level of, of inspiration. That, that man is, I don't know, come to think of it, D'Angelo only had three studio albums. But the effect of those studio albums, those three albums, are like, you know, voodoo. I still listen to voodoo from, you know, every other day, and I still listen, I still hear something new. Voodoo is, voodoo is, voodoo is, is a 21-year-old album, you know, like, I can identify with the way he makes music, the way he layers harmony, the way, you know, 
I mean, I could talk about the like from now to till next year. I mean, like, it's on it's on another level. That's that's another level of inspiration. But of course, you can see something similar uh, to the Angelo in me. That's the chorus and all that. You can see this is a soul music thing. It's not. Yeah, it's a soul music thing. <laughs> Well, R&B and soul music is, if you if you look at it very well, it's very, it's home friendly. First off, the thing about the thing about soul music is you can't escape soul music. You know, soul music is everywhere. You know, you can't escape it. It's home friendly. It's radio friendly. It's it's women love soul music and all that. And men are really grounded. Men they love soul music. Soul music is for everyone. It's not. The cuts are cross. Even at some point in rap music, man, for you to make your definitive rap single, you know, you have to, you have to bring an R&B guy in to give you that flavor. And people still do it now. You know? People still do it. Like, oh wait, we have a new rap single in Nigeria now, buzzing. I need a very nice hook to it. So you know, it's everything is buzzing. So when it comes to putting a project together, you have to serve a little bit of you know everything when it comes down to it. Because um, one of the things. One of the things that kill artistry is when, when uh, the range of your when the, the range of your topic is like limited. So as an artist, when you are putting together, you have to be able to affect different types of topics. You know, you have to do the emotional thing. You have to do what makes people happy, and you have to actually do music that makes people think. And that's 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 I try to do a lot of. I try to do like a bit of all of it and encompass everything into one single project. So. Like I actually keep like I, I analyze my track list all the time. Like this is a track list. Okay, what does this track do? This other track, what does it do? You don't understand because I don't really want to have too much of everything. Like you don't want to sing. Nobody wants to hear. Sometimes nobody wants to hear you. You know, talking about love all the time. People want to feel inspired. People want to feel motivated. People want to party. You know, people want to. People want to be identified with like. You know, we have insecurities and all of this things that people are dealing with. People want to be at, the people just want you to say what they are going through and they connect with you. So I try to do that with music a lot. <laughs> what makes me happy in music is a bit of a selfish thing because, you know, I make my own music, like from scratch, like from writing it to producing it to mixing that. So I get to enjoy the magic of putting music together. It makes me happy too. Imagine something. You know, there's a difference between you, you being an artist, and you go to a producer and you say, Oh, I have this idea, and they play it, and they put it together. So it's a whole new level when you sit down and you imagine something in your head and you unfold it as an idea, and then you put it together and present it to people. That's the magic. I just feel like, I just feel, when I create music, I just feel godlike. I just feel like closer to the creator when I do that. So that's the happiness for me. And then the next level of happiness is when people get to hear this music, the reaction. I like the reaction that you get to music. A lot of times, I, I, a lot of times when I was coming up making music, I don't get the reaction of, oh, my, but I get the reaction of the listen, you know. When you listen to it, you're captured. Like, you're actually listening. It makes you, it makes you think. It makes you think and go like one, one way or the other. So I like that. Because there are sometimes I've performed and people just, you know, I've had this as well. I was performing and people were just looking. And when I took the mic down, I started clapping. So all the world has been listening. And that's what I want people to do. When I make music, I want people to listen to it. I don't want you to just vibe. And I want the music to stay with you. And that's how I make music. Because when I, when I, when I do the music, I put that glue factor into it. Because when you hear it, it has to stay with you. That's, the, that's, that's just, that's, that's it for me. Well, Jason Blue was um, was a, was was at a point in my uh, my come up. Let me not call it career because that was the come up period. And when you know, I needed you know, as an artist, when you grow, you need to solidify a lot of things when it comes to your brand, your appearance, your style, your sound. You know. So Jason Blue came at a point where like I needed a new identity because I had to I had to decide where I'm going. You know, it just came like an inspiration. It's just and then too, 
And yes, when it comes to branding, you have to be unique. So when I, I was brainstorming, I was thinking about, okay, what's going to happen? What's this? Blah, blah, blah. It just came. And simple meaning, Jason, like, Jason, son of Jai, do you understand? Blue, the blue came from rhythm and blues, obviously. I'm an R&B artist, I, you know. So that's where it came from. And I just wrote it down on a piece of paper, Jason Blue, and it just stuck. I did a, I did a Google search. This came up very unique. Oh, wow. Let's go with it, man. It's cool. Let's, let's kill it, man. It's... I'll say for me it's one and the same because um, I don't I don't I don't believe in a split personality at the I don't like that. It's um, it's 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 hectic. It's stressful for me. It's one and the same. Jason Blue is Collins. Collins is Jason Blue. It's the same thing. And um, later in 2011, I had, I, had, I had an auto crash, so I had to like chill for like several months to recover. And later in 2012, I went, I went ahead with it with the release, and the song came out on my birthday in 2012. That was April 16th, and that was Last Giddy. So Last Giddy, um, I got a call from the UK actually from the director of one film, Last Flight to Abuja, and uh, they were like, nah, 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 we like this song, nah, 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 nah. So long story short, the song ended up on the movie like very prominently and all of that. So it gave the song a bit of buzz and it didn't hold my career either. Like had like a new set of fans and all of that. So, um, but due to some other, you know, upcoming artists in Nigeria and all that, man, the pressure did the money, not the everything, but you know, we move fast forward i think the, the, the next major um next major release i had was already which was in 2017 and uh already was actually at that point already was like the simplest song i ever wrote and that was my song that people that people loved the most at that point you know it was it was amazing you know so already went to radio stayed on some charts with the with the big guys, you know, and all of that. I'm very proud of that, you know. I went on chat and all of that. And um, later in the year, we shot the video. The video is, is out there and all that. Very amazing. Big shout out to my guy, um, Fem Daniel, who worked with me on, on the video. So, yeah. And um, I think after that, yeah, after that, the major release I had again was Brown Sugar, which was actually a remake of D'Angelo's Brown Sugar song from 95. And... Um, you know, I was just thinking, it was just at the time that I was, you know, sourcing for materials and all of that. Like, man, I don't want to really do a cover, but I need to actually, like, get people, like, a feel of where I'm coming from and what I really love musically. So, and at, at, as at that point, I was heavily listening to it. I wasn't listening to it. I was heavily studying the Angelus music. And no brain ads, you know. And I want some of your brown sugar. And it just doesn't work like that. So I just rebuilt the song. I rewrote the song. I created an Afro beat for it and all of that. And bam. Someone went, went to the stores and all of that. The next thing I did a random search on Twitter and some folks were tweeting about it in Japan, in Tokyo. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So long story short, I got got um, coverage in Japan and I got to have like new friends there, new fans, you know, everything was good. So that was, I, so Brown Sugar was the single to, uh, it was the single from my EP that came out later in 2020, which is uh, the World Soul EP. So and the name of that, and the name of that EP is like, um, it's symbolic to like the road, like the process, the build up to Soul Wave, which is actually so what is the name of my debut album? It's coming, it's completed right now, and I'm really wrapping up and trying to make arrangements for distribution, marketing, promo, whatever, you know, and all that. So Road to Soul Wave is like the build up from where I was to, you know, and I had to, I had to do something, man. I had to, I, had to, I had to release a body of work. Like people were already like on my head, like what's going on, dude? Yeah, this and, and I'm like, okay. I had to do something, really. So bam, the hippie. And you know the EP, you know, very good feedback. A big shout out to my uh, my guy too with, with that very sick verse on, on enough. And that's Big Max, you know, Big Max is, is, yeah, is, 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 is another level there. Yeah. 
You know, actually, I've been colla- I've been I've been collaborating with Big Mac since like for the longest. Like, I think the first time I worked with Big Mac was in 2010 when we created. I had this reggae song called Dreamland. I had Big Mac on it, and that song was dope. But it's in my archive. Maybe one day you get to hear it, but you know, for now. That was the build up, you know, I was just you know, finding myself as an artist, perfecting the sound and all of that, but everything we ever did was dope. Ever. So we came about because, you know, for the past how many years I've been making music, I've been building materials for an album. You know, but for the fact that I don't I didn't have a deal prior to then. And you know, I just keep creating alone. So I had like I had like a full archive of materials for uh, for the album and all that. So, you know, as an artist, when you're creating this, you get you you tend to, especially when you're creating very good materials, you tend to get selfish with it. You tend to hold music, which is bad for an artist. So I had to break myself from that mindset of holding music, just keeping music. You know, these are really good tracks and all of that. You know, I'm trying to put the project together. I'm trying to release an album and all that, but. Will I have to wait, like, wait till like, I get deal or what? You know, it didn't have to do that. At least I still have, like, you know, a sizable fan base that really wants to listen to me. So I had to be responsible to people that support me. So that's how I put um, Root to Soul Wave together. And of course, I already had Brown Sugar. It was doing well. So it was a no-brainer for me to put Brown Sugar, you know, couple it to other tracks and all that. And then, oh, yeah, there's another interesting moment in Root to Soul Wave, which was... Um, you remind me cover, you know, I sang, you remind me, um, the Usher's um, Grammy winning single from 2001. I took the first verse, if you know that song, and I flipped it to Worry Pigeon. And I put a very nice grand piano chord on that, with some strings and some ambience and... It's on the <laughs> Do your research, right? <laughs> You know, so that's it. That's an interesting moment, you know, and five track EP. And, uh, and funny enough, that's another, another interesting thing is that the last track on that EP, which is When I Get Home, is the oldest song on the EP. That song is from, is, is from a recording in 2013. And as I'm telling you, it's the most played song on that EP. The magic. So. Further prove my point that you just don't know how the music. You don't really don't know. You you know what you like. You know what you make. You know it's dope, but you can't hurt it because you really don't know what people love. So you have to just give it out. The song about it, I repackaged it and renamed it when I get home on the EP, and that's because the reason I did that was it was going to be on the album, okay, but. Um, when I did the track list of Soul Wave, I mean, Song About is a very, is a great song, no doubt. At least you can see it's, it's still the most played song on Red Soul Wave. But you know, there is the flow of the of the of, of the of the um, tracks on the album from one, two, three, two. And it's kind of like something of it's not really sitting. So I had to pull it out and put it on the EP and let it go with the EP. And of course, it's an old song from the archive and all that. So I just let it go, replaced it. Hmm? And another reason um, I kept it was because there's a remix to it. But I featured a guy that stays in Russia and my cousin, MC Lauda. So that remix is actually the. Oh, why am I giving you guys scoops of all this? Okay, no, no, let's just let, let something switch. So, anyways, there's a remix to it and it's coming with the album. Get your friends together with my friends. For the album is a 12 track album. As at now, I don't know, I might get crazy again and add something. Or, no, basically it's a 12 track, I mean, it's 12 awesome tracks. Maybe more, because there are some tracks that add like, that has like two songs on them and all that. So it's, it's a really, it's very, really, um, what do you call it now? It's an album of scenery, you know, it's, it's, well, it's wavy and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah, summertime, baby. <laughs> summertime, man. That's another. Huh. You know, summertime is one of is is one of the last tracks I added to Soul Wave. Mm, that's because um, I've had summertime for a while. I was supposed to collab with a DJ, um, a DJ friend of mine. That was in. 
in twenty that was before the pandemic. I was supposed to collaborate with him. I said, dude, what's going on and all that? I said, okay, has this, okay, I have this record for you. I already had summertime, not really written. I had the beats. Like I made a beat. Oh, I actually made that beat with um Mr. Easy in mind. Shout out to Mr. Mr. Easy. Then I kept it to him and I was like, okay. So when I had this talk with my DJ friend, I said, dude, I have a record for you if you want to do this and all that. So I wrote the song, I went to the studio, I recorded it, I sent it to this guy. You know, the guy was like, oh. the guy loved it, man, this is bomb, blah, oh my God. But I was really delaying it. At that point, I didn't finish the song. So once in a while, I do something, I go to my account and I listen to songs, I listen to songs. As when I just came, I just listened to some and I was like, okay. There's a summer coming. Well, let's give them an anthem or something. So, summertime, really simple, really laid back, really smooth, and really, really beautiful music. It's just, it's just, just smells of flowers, you know, you know, it's just, just, just have that blue, blue sky, you know, white clouds in, in your head when you listen to that music. And of course, man, like, you're christening the drop top, you know, with some really fine onions in the back and all of that, you know, dope music. There's no template to that, man. A spectacular song can happen within the space of, ha, huh, within the space of 15 minutes. And a spectacular song can take five years and you're still not done. It depends. There is no template. When, it's, when it comes to music, there is no template to it. It's just, it's, it's a flow. It's a flow thing. But producers, songwriters, that's, when you get my show, you just build yourself to a place where you know when to stop. So when you know when, when, when you know what is really acceptable, when it's good, because you can mix a song and mix and mix and mix. And still, you know. So it depends. It depends on you. It depends, it depends on how far you have come in creating. Sometimes it doesn't take for the seasoned producers, they don't take time at all, man. Like they don't, they just, you know, they know the basic, they know the standards, they just go for it. For me, I built myself to that level. You know, I can make music within minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I just sit down, I just write, and that's the end of it. And especially I don't take time when it comes to recording because I you know all the parts and all of that. So I just go in, I just lay it. But where I can take time is probably when I'm doing the vocal production or I'm mixing or I'm mastering. I'm still listening to it. I'm just going back and forth and all of that. But basically, man, we're not, this is 2021. We're no longer in the age where you waste too much time with music. So. Uh, my favorite um, process is mixing because mixing is where the magic is created. Um, mixing, okay, there's two parts to mixing. If you look at it, there's the, there's the vocal production where you get to you know, create um, magic with the vocal files. Like, okay, you want to take the vocal to like a new, another direction. You know, when you're coming from the studio, you have raw files. So when you want to make the vocal sound the way you want to make it sound, that is vocal production. That's when you're, that's, you know, that's a whole different thing. Then when you're mixing, because well, that's when the beauty of the song comes out. When you put everything in the right dynamics, everything in the right angle, everything in the right place, at the right level, at the right volume, that's when magic happens. When you're doing it, it's just like you are, you know, you're you are making something, you're creating something, and then when you lean back and you press me and you listen to it and it sounds right, that's a magic moment. Not the drink, the moment itself. Yeah. <laughs> I well, that's that's um, that's something I've been composing for films since 2014. That's like seven years now. You know, I've done I've done quite a number of films. Uh, I've made it to the cinema, made it to the big uh, TV platforms, and all that. So, um. I think it has, that part of me has to do with the fact that I'm a very imaginative person when it comes to, because that's what it takes to be a film composer or to be a sound designer. You have to be able to imagine like, like a child. You know? So, and the fact that I've been a producer um, for that long really helped because, um, and let me say basically now, apart from me being a recording artist, that is visually what I'm into right now. So it's like I have a foot, in the music industry and another foot in in the movie industry so uh it's been very good for me the only thing is that it takes my time you know, it's, it's very time consuming for you to sit down and design sound for a three-hour video 
or for a two hour video or a 90 minutes video, it takes a lot of your time because I'm a details person. I don't like doing, I, I don't, I like my work to be very, very top notch and standard and world class. So I take my time and, you know, basically, so that's it. You know, film, film, the film industry, um, that, that's an area in the film industry that, you know, I just tapped into, you know, it's just, it's a new, I mean, it's something coming up in Nigeria. Well, my appearance, uh, like I said, my cornrows is a soul music thing. And it's, it's just, it's just the thing about hair, you know, it's just the thing about you know, taking care. You know, if you're not somebody who's self-conscious, you can't take care of your hair and all that, you know, it's, I love hair. Personally, it's just something personal to me. I don't have time to. But, you know, I'm a simple person, actually. My style is hip. As you can see, my style is hip. I'm a simple guy, t-shirt, um, beads, you know, stores and all that. I'm simple. I'm really, I'm not really, I don't know. I don't know what might happen tomorrow. I'm not really a fashion kind of person. You know, I'm just, I just like to appear cool. And, and I like comfortable clothes. That's me. Very comfortable clothes. Yes. You know, with a bit of space and all of that, and you look good. The way you dress, the way you express, the way you create and everything is all embedded in your, DNA, in your DNA, you know, in your person. It shows who you are. You know, sometimes I believe if you listen, when you listen to somebody's music, you can, tell, you can tell the kind of person someone is from the way they write music. You can tell. Or from the way, if you're, if you're talking about a composer, from the way they compose, you can know this person is, this person is, is a dark person. Like, this person likes... You know, like the dark side of things or stuff like that. I think I'm a bit of because my scores are kind of dark, like majorly most of the time. So like I'm a dark person. I just there's that weird side to it, uh, you know. My album is dropping this year. I don't have a date, but it has to be this year. So set um officially um summertime is uh. It's confirmed to be the second single now from already because already is the first single and that's that's what I asked the video and everything. So summertime second. Because in the brown sugar went to Road Soul Wave the EP. So summertime second. So a couple more um singles from the album and we are out. You know. Basically, so but for me I just I need I just need to make some arrangements, you know. Um take care of distribution, take care of marketing, take care of promotion take care of you know a lot of other things and cover those cover those areas you know as an indie person it's not really easy to do all of that yourself and all that but you know i'm in the market for some offers and all of that so i'm still looking at things so as soon as i'm able to get all those sorted the album is ready we roll it to the market and then people get to have this really awesome masterpiece and then, you know. You know, the conversation we will always have in music across generations is you know, this, 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 this idea in music that the music from last year is better than the music from this year and all of that. You know, if you, if you, if you go to somebody who's 70 years old and playing music from this era, he's going to tell you it's trash. It doesn't mean it's trash. It doesn't, that's not necessarily correct. You know, you know, what I'm saying is music, like everything in, in life, music evolves. You know, the sound of music, the sound of R&B in 1950, it's not the sound, it wasn't the sound, sound of R&B in the 1960s. It wasn't the same in the 70s, 80s, and it's definitely not the same in the 90s, where me, I grew up, when I started listening to R&B. And uh, the 90s we loved, and all of that, when you come down to the early 2000s, mid 2000s and late 2000s, you know, there's a lot of changes, like in the sounds, and all of that. So, you know, it's society. Society evolves and the way people look at things, you know, the gadgets we use, everything, you know, the way our environment is, is affecting the way this music thing is being made. So I think it's about tolerance for me. I don't think because I do this certain kind of music, maybe it's probably um, more quality than what some other people do. It doesn't mean what other people do is not because they have people they appeal to, I have people I appeal to. So I think there is room enough for everyone to enjoy what they do. And when it comes down to R&B now especially, people will always love R&B. That's just the thing. It's a psychological thing. When you hear music, like when you hear elements from R&B, you just, you, just, you just love it. You just love it. No matter what the form is, it's, 
if RB is fused with trap, if it's fused um, with root hip hop, if it's fused with Afrobeat the way I'm doing, or whatever, as long as it has that soul element, people are going to always love it. So I think, especially in Nigeria now, you know, we have done very amazing as far as, far as music is concerned in Nigeria when it comes to like, from previous years to now, we've done very amazing. We've produced a lot of awesome artists and um, R&B and the element of that. I think we're not doing very bad as well. We have a lot of legends that did really crazy things. Like we have FaZe, we have Banky W, we have, we have um, Daria Taladi. We, we have all these people, man. Come on, like Nigeria, we do all right. So I don't think the new generation, we are going to do very, very, very awesome as well. Because I can see a lot of guys doing some really amazing things. So we're in a good place if you ask me, man. Pop has always been the the genre with the, like the highest noise profile because of because of the elements of pop. You know, for instance, okay, let me say from like as as a producer now, you know, like the elements of R and B are mellow, like kind of mellow. The elements of pop are bright and loud, and you know, so if you play an R and B record now. People are going to relax and all that. If you play a pop record, they're probably going to you know, spring up. But it doesn't mean the average pop artist is going to sell more records than an average R&B artist or an average rap artist. It all depends on how the music is marketed. But the pop guys seem to, you know, they seem to know how to like market that thing because they don't even need to do much, you know. Anyways, you know, but the pop market was there when... Um, when in 2017, 2018, Kenny Lama was doing um, double platinum ahead of every other person. Like I said, it's all about how people connect to it and it's all about how you market it. Everybody can sell, everybody can do well. As long as people can connect to those you are doing, everybody can do, everybody can tour, everybody can be the big stars. And of course, this, this one part I'm going to mention is very important. Um, you know, artists, they tend to there's something happening that I noticed in, in the music industry, you know, they tend to like compare. Like, I'm an RB artist. I can't compare the noise profile of what I do to like the noise profile of let's say whiskey or individual. That's a different kind of crowd entirely, you know. That's a different and, and their crowd has like a different kind of crowd behavior, you know. So it's not it's it's like comparing, it's like comparing a monkey to a fish. You know, it's it's different. They are, a monkey can jump very high and a fish can swim very far. So I don't know. Everybody can do very awesome in their lanes and, and still come together and, um, you know, interact and collab and do very great things, you know. So why I think we need to do more in the Nigerian music industry is we need to encourage more instead of comparing. That comparison sometimes it boils over and people are saying things and people are fighting and all of this. No, it's music. Just enjoy music, you know. Just love music. Just love these guys who work very hard to create music and to create their art, love them, appreciate them, buy their records, go to their shows, you know, just be awesome. My name is Jason Blue. I'm a singer, songwriter, record producer, entrepreneur, and, you know. And um, I am buzzing with Simple TV. Keep it locked. Don't change the dial. If you change the dial, I will change on for you.